Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to configure data in Microsoft Excel and import it into SPSS. So it's not unusual in quantitative research to collect data in Microsoft Excel, because Microsoft Excel is very good uh, for formatting data, and then to, uh, once it's all collected, then to import it into SPSS, which of course is designed to run uh, statistics of all different varieties. It's also not uncommon in quantitative research to work in teams. So you may be receiving data from multiple members of the research team. And it's a good idea to try to standardize how that data is recorded in Excel before importing it into SPSS. So I have here a Microsoft Excel workbook with two worksheets. One is named Data and one is named Labels. And this is fictitious data. Let me go over this design. Uh, I think this will make sense uh, as it relates to quantitative research and counseling, right? So you have here uh, column A is record. You could also call this case number. This would be the uh, participant number. You can see there's 40 participants in the study. Then you have gender. This is coded as, as either female or male. Then you have age, which of course is a numeric value. Then you have your first independent variable. This is counseling group. So let's presume that um, this study is looking at depressive symptoms, right? So this control group, these participants would go, we get no counseling for a depression or no counseling at all. And the treatment group would receive counseling for depression. Uh, at the same time, you have a, another independent variable, medication, and you have no medication and then 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams of medication, presumably this medication would be helpful with depressive symptoms. And then you have some sort of depression inventory that's measured uh, before the treatment, uh, either the counseling uh, or the medication beginning. And then a post-test, which is administered after the counseling and medication uh, treatments are completed. The way this data is configured in this worksheet is acceptable to import into SPSS. Um, it, can, it can go directly into SPSS right now and be functional. Uh, but I strongly recommend coding it uh, numerically uh, as this will standardize uh, the data set. And as you get more data in, uh, you can make that data adhere to the standard you can modify it, and it makes the whole process a little easier to manage. So that's why I have this labels uh, worksheet. So you can see I've coded or recorded the codes for the different variable values. So here you have um, female, and that's coded as 0, male as 1 and uh, similarly control and treatment 0 and 1 and then medication 0, 1 and 2. Uh, it is a tradition to start with 0 uh, when beginning to code and not 1. Right, that's, that's a common way to do it. So you may look at this data and be thinking well it's already uh, coded with strings meaning it's all typed out but there are several ways to easily uh, format it over to this standard that I've set in this worksheet here in labels. Of course the first is you could simply type the value uh, that's probably the most time consuming. Uh, another method is to uh, find and replace so that's uh, in Microsoft Excel that's control H so you'd want to find the value in this case uh, female and replace it with the value 0 and replace all and then similarly uh, male and replace that with one now remember to use caution with this feature 
uh, as in this particular example, I only had the words female and male in the gender variable, but they can appear as values in other variables, in which case Excel would have changed those as well. So another way uh, to change it, if you have the values grouped like this, it becomes fairly easy. You change one value to zero and then look for the small black crosshairs right there. That's autofill and just fill everything down. And similarly, the one for treatment. It's just another method you could use. Of course, the find and replace would always would also work rather. And just to make this a little easier to read, I like to center it if it's numeric. And then you have uh, the medication. So this one's a little trickier because you'd have to type out the word medication in each example. That would take that would take time. If this were a thousand records, then I would say it'd be worth it. But for only 40, it's probably easier just to autofill uh, the zeros and just copy the zero then find every other place where it says no medication and just paste it. The same thing with medication, 10 milligrams. And I'll paste it over top here. And then of course, the I missed one there. And the same thing for uh, medication, 20 milligrams. And again, I just like to center it just because I think it looks a little easier. It's a little easier to read. Um, looks a little better. All right, so now this data is in a standardized format according to the labels I have here and is ready to go into uh, SPSS. So I'll save this. So this is a uh, the data view of an empty SPSS data file. And you can see it's looking for a data set. Remember to change the type of file to Excel. So you can see the Excel file that I just saved. And this uh, dialog is going to come up. And it's going to say, do you want to read the variable names from the first row of the data? And you might remember in this case, uh, the first row did have the variable name. So you want to leave that checked and just double check here that it has the right worksheet, uh, the one you intend. And of course, this is the correct one. So here we have what it looks like when it imports into SPSS, and here's the variable view. So let's see, uh, SPSS attempts to figure out uh, your different variables. Uh, it's correct that everything was numeric. Uh, record isn't a scale, though. Record is nominal, so you'll correct that. Uh, gender is nominal, it has that, it has that correct. Age is uh, technically a scale. Counseling, nominal, has that correct? Medication, so these are two independents, and of course it correctly has uh, scale for both the pretest and the post-test. Now just to uh, clean up the way this data view looks with all these decimals, uh, I'll go here to decimals in variable view and just set this as zero. Uh, for for all of them. And if you go back, you can see it just looks cleaner uh, now that it's, it's set that way. So now we need to put in the labels for each of the variables. And that is a fairly straightforward process. We'll start here with gender. We remember that uh, we had coded female as zero and male as one. 
So first we'll put the label in, and oftentimes the label matches the name that you'll see over here. In this case, uh, gender would be good. Right? Uh, record, you may want to change that based on what you want your output to look like. You may want to put uh, cases. Age, typically age. Now you see counseling group. There's no space allowed here in the variable name. In label, there is a space allowed, so I would, I would change that. And medication group, same thing. And then, of course, pretest and post-test. Uh, you may want to change to the actual name of the instrument you're using and then put the words pretest or post-test behind it. Now we want to code for values. So we'll go to gender. And remember the value is zero matches the, fe the uh, label of female. And the value of one matches the label of male. And OK. Age doesn't need to have a value. A counseling group does. Remember we had two. We had control which was zero. And we had treatment, which was one. So then we'll move to the last dependent variable that we need to add values to, which is medication group. You might remember zero was the no medication group. Add that, and then one was uh, medication 10 milligrams. And two was medication 20 milligrams. So if this were, you know, if you had the actual medication, you may put the name and just the number of milligrams, or maybe even the milligrams first, and then the name. So now we have everything coded uh, properly. All the values are in. And the measures, the levels of measurement are correct. And the labels are the way we want them. Go back to the data view. And you can see that uh, it has the strings uh, in, in place of the uh, numeric values. This button here with the A and the 1 uh, switches it back and forth. So you can see this is how it looked in Excel. And this is how it looks with everything typed out. So when you run analyses, these strings are going to be present on the uh, tables and on the charts. It, it won't come out with uh, zeros, uh, ones, and twos. It'll come out with the actual strings. So I hope this video uh, was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me.